Floods cause large problems for Europe. With climate change, the intensity of rain will increase in the future. At the same time, the vulnerability in the society to floods and to other type of extreme weather is increasing due to urbanization and to dependence on different technical infrastructure. It is important to protect people, to protect the nature and the society and to manage the flood risks in a good way. Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany with its 1.7 million inhabitants. The city is located along the river Elbe, about 100 kilometers from the river mouth in the North Sea. Elbe is one of the large rivers in Europe with a river basin of approximately 150,000 square kilometers. The river starts in the mountains in the Czech Republic flows through Germany and to the North Sea. But since there is no barrier between the city of Hamburg and the North Sea coast, Hamburg is located at the coastline. So the river Elbe in Hamburg is tightly influenced and thus we have problems with storm surges or we have to save to protect the city against storm surges which can be very high in Hamburg. In February 1962, a disastrous flood struck Hamburg. The dikes built to protect the city was broken at 60 different places, and the houses for 60,000 persons were damaged. More than 300 persons died. Forty years later, in 2002, another large flood occurred in Elbe. This time the damages were not that large in Hamburg, but areas higher up in the river basin were badly damaged. The flood in 2002 also badly affected big cities like Prague and Dresden. In Dresden large parts of the central city was flooded when the water level increased by more than 9 meters which is the highest level recorded since regular measurements started more than 200 years ago. The central station was flooded by a tributary to Elbe. Several hospitals had to be evacuated, and the museum Swinger, with large values of cultural heritage, was flooded and some parts were evacuated. The Augustus Bridge in the city center was almost flooded and we still can see the limit between the lighter areas in the bridge arches that were cleaned by the flood water and darker areas that were still above the water level. One benefit in Dresden is that the city has kept a type of floodplain including parks and grassland along the river which is good in two ways. There are less vulnerable objects near the river and there is also some potential to store water in those areas. Hamburg can be affected by two major types of floods. The storm surges, when a high water level in the North Sea is pushed upstream into Elbe, also damming the river. The second type is the river flood, when much rain higher up in the Elbe catchment causes high flows. It is important that the Hamburg citizens are aware of the flood risks. We built dikes and sea walls, flood, flood, flood walls, flood protection walls. In order to connect the areas in front of the dike to the areas, uh, to the protected areas, and some parts of the dikes and uh, of the sea walls, um, gates have to be uh, built. So the, elect the um, flat gates can be, um, if the flat gates are not working, we can place the steel elements, the stop locks in front of the, the gates. And um, there are also many different ways to close uh, the gaps in the, in the flood protection line. So we are very safe in Hamburg. The strategy in Hamburg is to integrate as far as possible, old buildings into the uh, public sea defense. 
the pathways through the building are protected by flap gates and the windows, the historical windows of the uh, building, which um, are um, lower than the uh, design water level, they are protected at the inner side by uh, about, uh, um, another window which is about six centimeters thick. And the tunnel, it's protected by um, by stop locks, by steel elements which are placed in front of the entrances in order to, to keep the water away from the tunnel. Fish market is in front of the main dike line, so it's a flooding area which is flooded also with normal, let's say normal storm surges. So it's, uh, uh, once or twice a year the area will be flooded. Um, around the fish market some people are living and also some restaurants and shops are located and in the fish, fish auctions halle there's uh, are often events and there's a parking area around the fish auctions halle so in case of a high storm surge um, the fish market has to be uh, um, evacuated and all the cars have to be removed and then the big flat gate the fish market flat gate gate can be closed. The storm surges that affect Hamburg can cause problems even higher up along the river. At the confluence between Elbe and the tributary Ilmenau, we find another example of flood protection. These floodgates can be closed to prevent a high water level in Elbe to affect also the Ilmenau River and the city of Lüneburg. In Lüneburg, the experience from previous floods has led to an adaptation of the architecture. Lüneburg has the advantage that there's a huge flood retention area upstream of Lüneburg. And this is protected and it cannot be um, developed or they not allowed to, to build something there. We visited a place uh, which was, in earlier days, it was uh, some industry area or a wharf and uh, then this area was not used anymore in that, in that way and it was it's very nice there, it's close to the river and close to the city so some investors said, may, yeah, we, we should develop this area but then the water management manager said, oh, what's about flood risk? So they had to find a way of uh, adaptive architecture and uh, together with the architects they designed a special way of building these houses. So they put the houses on, on pillars so that the potential flood risk is lower there now. Elbe is around 1100 kilometers long, from the Czech mountains to the North Sea. The river was during the Cold War period the border between East and West Germany, which gave a relatively inactive use of the land nearest to the river. This is important today for the management of the flood risks. Yeah, it's a very long stretch of a river, it's more than 1000 kilometers and uh, it derives from the Czech Republic and Polish Republic, uh, from the mountain areas and uh, so traditionally we get a lot of uh, snow melting water in uh, late winter, early spring and typical for River Elbe is also a, a small peak in June, a uh, flood peak. That's typical and uh, these winter floods uh, had become higher during the last decades, obviously. Maybe due to climate change, maybe due to other reasons, no one knows exactly. But uh, we had, uh, yes, four uh, so-called century floods in the first decade of this century. And uh, the highest we have ever had uh, in recent years has been uh, this year in January. 
Flooding is a natural part of a flood plain and a lot of ecosystems are dependent from regular floodings and they get uh, this, uh, this specific features from these floodings. So from a nature conservation point of view, we are very interested in uh, keeping uh, large flood plains and in re-diking wherever it is possible to give more space to the River Elbe and to get more of these semi-aquatic uh, habitats. Agriculture is the dominant land use in the river valley. The floods cause a permanent threat to many farmers. The farmers and their associations cooperate with the authorities to protect the farmland, but also to use the land in a structured way as retention areas, which can be inundated and store some of the water during floods. Farming is very important uh, at the River Elbe because you need farm, uh, the farmers to um, uh, to keep the um, inundation area uh, free uh, from b trees and bushes so that the water can uh, go downstream if you have a flood event. If uh, nobody uh, uses this land, I mean, if you have no farmers, they, trees and bushes will grow and uh, the, um, the birds who uh, uh, came here just to have a rest during their um, uh, travel uh, from, uh, from north to south and from south to north, um, won't like to um, have a rest in, a, in an area here with trees and uh, with bushes. So it's very important for the nature to have uh, agricultural land use. I think the farmers can deal with the flooding. They know uh, about the flooding, they live here and they uh, live with, na with nature because here uh, in our region it's a uh, biosphere reserve, but uh, they uh, have to know how to deal with uh, risks and if you have um, more often flooding events, uh, so you have to deal more often with different risks and so we uh, need, uh, or the farmers need some uh, help just or assistance to be uh, protect or to protect themselves. We met this farmer and he uh, is uh, every second or third year he is affected by flooding. And he uh, is, uh, if his uh, farmhouse is surrounded by water, he has to deal how to feed his sheep and how to get the fodder to the uh, to the farm, because by uh, boat it's not possible to get all the, um, a large amount of fodder to the um, to the sheep. Uh, the dikes are maintained by sheep. Uh, the sheep are grazing on the dikes, and the sheep are. Um, important to stabilize the dikes because they are walking on the dikes and if, uh, the grass is short. If you have a flood event then you have different uh, animals who may destroy the dikes. Especially we have a lot of beavers here in this region and um, if the beavers uh, try uh, to uh, escape from the flood, they um, may dig a, a hole in the dike, and so they, they have to be take care about uh, these animals and these beavers not to destroy the dikes.